Hey everyone, it's Alexandria from Alexandria's Lens here. I'm a digital artist and photographer, and I'm best known for my magical portraits. Today I wanted to show you how I created this Wizard of Oz image with the help of Adobe Stock. <laughs> Let's get started. First, I'm going to use the Quick Selection tool with the Select a Mask option to cut Emma out of her original shot and put her onto a more spacious background that I took during the photo shoot. The Refine Edges tool is great for quickly cutting around her hair or other small details like that. Now let's head over to Adobe Stock and find a tornado for the background. I need something with a perspective that will work with my original photo, and luckily they have plenty of tornadoes to choose from. The original sky is actually really easy to remove with the quick selection tool because of the huge color difference between the sky and the ground and the contrast, so let's get rid of that. It took a bit of the opacity out of the grass line, but since I used a layer mask, I can just use a soft white brush and add that grass right back in. Ah, check out that tornado. It's actually already looking pretty good back there. It will need a bit more blending. I tend to use a lot of aperture in my photos and I find that it increases the focus of my subjects, but it also means that when I bring in things like stock elements, such as this tornado, I have to make sure that it is blurred appropriately to match the background. Gaussian blur is my usual go-to, but the type of blur you use really depends on what you're trying to blend. After a bit more fine tuning on Emma's layer mask, I'm going to add in a sunburst that I created on the black background. All I need to do is change the layer blend mode to screen and the black background disappears, leaving us with just the sun rays. I'm going to take a moment to do some more color bouncing and fine tuning. Everyone has their own style and workflow. I prefer to blend each element individually before adding more. It just helps me visualize how I want to progress with the image. For this photo, I want to give Emma a bit more color, similar to Dorothy in The Wizard of Oz once she gets to Oz, but I also want to maintain a feel of realism. Now it's time to head back to Adobe Stock to find a Karen Terrier. Toto from The Wizard of Oz was a Karen Terrier, and it's a super cute dog. Uh, a feature I love on Adobe Stock is that when you click on an image, they will show you more pictures from that series if they're available, and you can also click Find Similar, which saves a ton of time. I'm using one of those pictures because I liked the coloring and stance a bit better than the original shot that I found. Again, the Select a Mask with Refine Edges tool does a pretty good job of cutting out hair, so after I place the dog on the field, I can dive right into blending, and I'll draw more hair on him later. There are so many blending techniques out there, but one thing I like to do, especially when I need to change the direction of the light, is to use a curves adjustment layer with a layer mask attached, and just paint with a soft brush to create shadows. I'm going to use a grass brush on the dog's layer mask to blend his legs into the grass. Blurring the layer mask itself will actually help match the texture of the grass. I'm going to add a bit more dust and debris to the base of the tornado to create more intensity. For this, I'm going to use a dust brush and a cloud brush, then blur and color adjust to blend it into the ground. I want to add a subtle pop of color to the ground for more dimension, so we're headed back to Adobe Stock to find some flowers. I really like the Find Similar option, I know I mentioned it before, and in this case it's helped me find a great set of flowers. In order to separate the flowers, I'm going to go to Select Color Range and select just the yellows. I'm going to pull the flowers over and do some color correcting, then use the flowers as a sort of palette and place them individually onto the grass using the clone stamp tool. To create depth of field, I'll duplicate that flower layer a couple of times and enlarge them and blur them using the lasso tool and Gaussian blur. I wanted to add blowing leaves to create more movement in the photo, so following the same steps as the flowers, let's find great falling leaves from Adobe Stock, cut them out, color match them, and clone stamp them into position. The big difference is this time I'm going to use motion blur on several of the leaves to create the feeling of movement. I always keep my ratio 4 to 5 for the end result because Instagram always crops the photos, and I check to see what my photo is looking like in that ratio during editing. I'm going to reposition the dog and the flowers a bit to optimize how they'll look once cropped into that ratio, and I'd also like the dog to be looking up, so I'll use the puppet warp to bend his head upwards in a realistic way. Let's also use the grass brush to blend the dog and the flowers into the grass a little bit more. As I mentioned earlier, I wanted to circle back around to draw some extra hair on the outline of the dog, as well as add some sunlight on the front for some extra realism. So I'm going to duplicate the sunburst and use it as a clipping mask to cast light onto the front of the dog. And I'm also going to brush extra detailed hair onto the outline of the dog. And after a bit more color adjustments and curves, we are done. All right, that's it. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you'd like to check out more of my work, feel free to head on over to at Alexandria's Lens. And don't forget to say hi.